Hello everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. I am Zachary Powell, the Senior Android Developer Advocate at Vonage. And today we're going to take a look at how we can create an Android application that's able to make a phone call to a physical phone number. And this will be using the Vonage APIs and we will be writing the app in Kotlin. You can find the written version of this tutorial over at developer.vonage.com as well as the sample project that we will basically be using. So do make sure you check those out. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. So as with all tutorials, there's a couple of prerequisites that we need to get set up first before we can actually get started. So of course, first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to create a Vonage account. You can do this by heading over to developer.vonage.com and using the sign up for free button. And once you've got your developer account, we can move forward. You need to make sure that you've also got node.js installed. And this how you do that is obviously going to be different depending on your operating system. But we're going to be using this for the Vonage CLI, which is basically a very convenient way to get a lot of the things set up that we're going to be using. So once you've got node.js installed, the next thing to do will be to install the Vonage CLI. So that's available through package manager. Once that's installed, you can configure that with your API key and your API secret, which you'll find on your Vonage dashboard. After you've done that, you're of course going to need a phone number to be able to call out from. So you can either buy a Vonage number through the dashboard using the free credit that is available to you when you sign up, or you can actually do that directly through the CLI as well. So either way, whichever is your preference, make sure that you have a phone number bought and you're aware of what that number is. And of course, finally, this is an Android project, so we are going to need Android Studio installed. So do make sure that you have that all set up and configured to your liking. And once those steps are done, we can move forward with this tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start by going ahead and creating a new directory for our server side of the application. And in here, we're just going to initialize a new project and kind of go with all the normal basic setup. And, and then we're just going to take the server file from the text tutorial. We'll have a look at what we actually have in this file in a second, but let's start by just sort of copying and pasting that into our server.js file. Okay, so that's all in there now, and we're just going to save that. And then there's a couple of variables that we need to change at the top. So subdomain, and this can just be any subdomain that you might want, just to make it easier to differentiate this from any other local web server that you've got going on. And then your voltage number is, as you may well have guessed, the phone number that you've just bought over on your Vonage dashboard. So start by typing in the um, the region code. So I'm in the UK, so that is 44 and then type out the number into this variable here. OK, so let's just take a quick look at what the server itself is actually doing. So you can see that we have two endpoints here that we're creating. First basically contains the destination phone number and we're extracting that and sending that as JSON. And then the second is just going to send on the event URL that the Vonage API provides us. Then we're just creating a local web server to host that on port 3000. So as you saw, we just need to install a couple of packages to make this web server actually work. So we're going to set up um, Express and Local Tunnel. We're going to save those to our local project and we should be good to go. OK, so with all that set up, we should now be able to just run up our node server and we should have our application ready to be used by our Android application. So with that set up, there's a little bit more configuration we need to do on the Vonage side. So we're going to create a Vonage application and this will link everything together that we've already kind of built. So here we're just giving it a name. Apps phone tutorial is fine. And we're also going to set the voice answer URL, which is going to point towards the server that we've just set up. And we're also going to set up a voice event URL as well. Both of these are going to point to the two endpoints that we've already set up and are ready to go. And as you can see, once that's created, we're given a load of information. But most importantly, we have the application ID right here. So with that set up, the next thing we need to do is link our phone number that we have previously registered with Vonage. 
and link that to the app itself so we know that for this application we are using this phone number so we'll grab the application id from the last command uh, we will use that here and then we will also just type out the uh, phone number that we've previously bought through the Vonage uh, dashboard. Okay, and then next for testing purposes, we're going to create a user for the uh, Vonage application. So here we're just going to create a user and we're going to give it a name of Alice. Um, that's all we need to do. And you'll see that we get a user ID. So finally, the last thing we need to do is we need to authenticate that user for that application. So we have this command here where we supply the application ID, we supply the subject, which is the user we've just created. We also need to give the private key file that we were given and generated when we create the application. And finally, we have some JSON, which just gives us the different authentication um, parameters. Then you see we get back a nice JWT to use in our application. Okay, so we can now dive into Android Studio. Here, I've just created a blank Android Studio project using the default main activity and um, we've also got this main activity view as well so very straightforward very basic sort of application to start with um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting the Vonage SDK set up with the project so we can just go straight into our build gradle file and we can implement the SDK here and next we're going to pop over into our settings.gradle file and as you can see we've got the maven central repo already set up if you don't have this in your project you're going to need to add that that's where the s the sdk uh, resides so from a default project you don't have to do anything but uh, your own project may vary next we're going to drop over into the gradle.properties file and we're going to just add jetify into this just enable that and that's all the sdk configuration that we need to do to get started with this project so as we're going to be making a phone call in this application, we are going to need to add some manifest permissions. So we're just going to copy those into here. And these permissions are kind of quite standard stuff, as you can imagine, when you're going to be making a phone call within an application. So we need internet access. We need to know the network state and the Wi-Fi state so we can understand if we're using mobile data. Uh, but the most important thing here is definitely the record audio permission. That is a protected permission, so we're going to need to request access to that permission from the user at runtime. But all the others we're kind of already given straight out of the box, so we'll be good to go there. So let's head over to our main activity and we're going to request that record audio permission. In this example, we're just going to directly request it every time we run the application, but obviously in your own code you will probably want to use a more sophisticated way of checking if the permission's already been granted and making use of that instead of just directly requesting it but here to keep things simple we are literally just going to request that permission from the user and continue on with our application okay so next up let's go and just kind of create a simple ui for this application we're just going to use a very basic linear layout with two buttons one to start the call, one to end the call, and a text view that's just going to give us some information about the current connection status. So let's then also create those two buttons and that text view as variables in our main activity class. Next, we're just going to go ahead and link those variables up to their respective view objects uh, using the find view by ID. Uh, we'll do these for all three of them. And then we also will set up a on-click listener for the start call button and for the end call button. And then we're just going to create the empty functions for start call and another function for hang up as well, which we will populate in a second. So with all the boilerplate set up, we can now go ahead and actually set up our, our phone call. So we're going to start by creating a Nexmo client object. And this is the object that's kind of going to be in charge of the full phone call process so we're going to initialize that client using the nexmo uh, builder which will basically just get everything set up for us and all we need to do is pass in context for that so that will be this activity from here we're going to create a connection listener against that client uh, and we're going to use this just to be able to update the connection status text view so we can see what's actually going on with our current phone call uh, and also make some changes to the 
buttons that are displayed. So depending on whether we're currently in a phone call or what's currently happening will change what we actually display in the UI. Okay, so next we're just going to use the login method to authenticate our user. And that just takes the uh, JWT that we got earlier from the command line and that will log in our user Alice. Okay, so we can now go ahead and populate our start call function. And this is basically going to use the method on the client, which is the server call method. This takes as, as a first parameter the phone number that you actually want to make a phone call to. And then the second is some custom data, which we won't be using. And finally, we'll be using a Nextmo request listener to monitor the phone call. But here we're going to override the on success and the on error methods for the listener. And we're going to do this to just update the UI to show the correct buttons. So while we're in a call, we're not going to be able to see uh, the start call button, but obviously we will be able to end the call while we're in the process of having a call. Next, we need to handle the ending of a phone call. And there's two ways that this might happen. We might need to end the phone call because we've pressed the end call button, but we also might need to end the call if the other person has ended the call. So here we're going to create a new variable ongoing call, which will just keep a track of whatever the current phone call is, if there is one. So in our request listener, when we start the call, we are going to assign that current Nextmo call object as the ongoing call. We are then also going to set up a call event listener and using the on member status update method, we will be able to check the current status of the, the call. And we can use this to determine if we do need to now cancel the current ongoing call. And we can do that by just checking to see if the new state is either in the complete state or if the new state is in the cancelled state. If either of these things are true, we know that the call has now come to an end, so we can reset the ongoing call variable and display the start call button once again. With that done, we can now move on to handling us actually wanting to call, cancel the call. So if we press that hang up button, how do we do that? Well, we can use the hang up method that's on the Nextbo call object, so on our ongoing call, and we can pass in a request listener onto that as well. Of course, we can override the on error function just to handle any errors that might hang up, happen during the hang up process. And then in the on success, we know that once that hang up has successfully happened, we can just remove the current ongoing call. With that all in place, we're now ready to run up the application and give it a test. So we're running the application on the emulator and as you can see, it comes up. We can then start the phone call by just pressing this call button. And here we have a live feed from my Pixel 4 and we should receive the phone call. And here you go, we have the incoming phone call triggered from the application using the Vonage number that we have purchased. And you can also see here that in the server log, we're getting the event information printed out. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much for coming through this tutorial with me. I hope it's given you a good insight into how you can make a phone call via your application on Android. And of course, this is only just the start. Please do go check out all the other tutorials that we have available and dive into our Vonage developer website where you'll find all the documentation, SDKs and tools that you could possibly need.